Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today I'm once again answering your questions, such as what is my renewed opinion on Grand Seiko? When should you buy your Grail watch? And are we raising capital? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. I am wearing my Piaget. Polo 40, uh, 45, I was going to say 45, no, 45, Flyback Chronograph GMT, absolutely loving it. And of course, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Just got in a minty Rolex Mariner Hulk uh, that is blue bezel, blue dial. We have an Omega Seamaster Bond recently serviced by Omega. And a Rolex Mariner no date, complete box and papers, all at DelrayWatch.com, the only place an intelligent watch enthusiast should buy a pre-owned watch. So yeah, guys, these are the questions you asked me on Instagram, that's at Federico Talks Watches. Please do not DM me, that is not where I check, you have to see the Q&A picture. Guys, if you see me staring down, once again, you know the drill, just reading the question, not trying to be rude. And in no particular order, Fran Esposto says, hey Fed, Loving the recent content and loving your recent brutal honesty. Thank you, brother. Do you think dress watches will start to make a comeback once more and people once people return to the office? Or is the steel sports watch craze here forever? Well, I don't think the office has anything to do with it. I think the sports watch is here for a little while. I think fashion is cyclical. Uh, so I, we're in the sports watch craze. I don't think the office has anything to do with it. But I really hope... Dress watches do make a comeback. I'm a fan of dress watches. I think we're in a world that is entirely too casual. You know, schlebs wearing baseball caps in nice restaurants and sweatpants and feet with no socks on business class and airplanes. I uh, cringe at the lack of elegance, style, and decorum that we live in in the current world. So I'm a big dress watch fan. But unfortunately, no, I don't think they're going to make a comeback, you know, imminently. But, you know, they should as it is cyclical. McSimmons. Hey, Fed, congrats on Delray Watch. I've been following you for a long time. Thank, McSimmons. Have you ever thought of raising capital? I've seen your progress and have been trying to get financial exposure for my fund in the watch industry. Well, McSimmons, in the beginning, I know we didn't want to because we wanted to keep entire control. But I know that demand uh, is very hard to put up with. Uh, at the moment, and we're very much growing, and uh, even though this is not my area, this is more John P's area, my partner, you can email him, john at delraywatch.com, I think he's trying to figure out a way where we can grow faster and more efficiently, um, and I do think he is trying to raise funds, not any funds, but the right kind of funds. Thomas De Miranda. What is your opinion of Grand Seiko these days? Thomas, I love them. While I don't necessarily love Spring Drive, and I don't necessarily love all their designs, I love what the company's doing. Very organic, very high quality, very bold, no marketing fluff, innovating, new models, new dials. I like it. I can stand behind it. I think the price point, even though it's growing, which is their plan, still great watch for the money and while they have to get past the seiko moniker um and kind of what that means to the general public i do love them very much even though i didn't used to breezes 23 hey fed what do you think of consolidating the collection to purchase one or two grail watches for example is it worth selling off a few rolex grand seikos and iwc for a watch from the holy trinity if you love the watch from the Holy Trinity, if that is what you want, is that is, if that is what you lust after, then yes, sell, 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 especially the Rolex and especially in this market because it's super hot. I've done it in the past. I think you get massive satisfaction when you step up and you wear the watch you've dreamed about after so long. And if what's holding you back from responsibly attaining it is having too many watches in your collection, well then sell them and get the one watch you really want. Lolcopter. Hi, how's the pre-watch industry doing? I read articles in the Wall Street Journal about the market size. It seems to be exploding. It is exploding. We've grown about 400% in the past two years. Uh, we're constantly understaffed and occasionally uh, underfunded for the demand that we're getting. And these are all good problems to have, but the watch industry, especially pre-owned, 
is doing fantastically. Krabby Pabby. Do you get annoyed when people say watches are useless to tell the time, especially with the emergence of cell phones uh, doing so for less money? How do you describe traditional watchmaking? Watches are not necessarily about telling the time. I mean, yes, that is a, their function, but I describe a watch as a piece of wearable art, as an expression of my style, as something that makes me stick out from the rest. Women have handbags, they have shoes, they have jewelry. Us men, we don't have that much. And to own something that is handcrafted and exquisite on your wrist, which is also functional, is a great way to explain horology. You can tell your time more accurately on your phone, but I can tell time more elegantly on my wrist. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.